so last time I know we talked quite a bit about your up and um, being one of the first African-American families in the Chicagoland area. Uh, and it led you to have a better broad perspective on humanity. So I guess I'm just to get a better understanding of the way in which that you view the most effective approach to getting more equal access to opportunity for individuals of all backgrounds, uh, whether that's within a corporation or just in the early childhood educational uh, realm as we think towards the future here. Well, um, I happen to I happen to believe that there's nothing new. <laughs> so you could go back in history and you can look at how do people go from poverty to prosperity? Because I think there's nowhere in the world where poor people are healthy, educated, and safe. And conversely, nowhere in the world are affluent people not healthy, educated, and safe, regardless of their color or anything like that. Obviously, Michael Jordan is black, and Michael Jordan is better off than 99.9999% of people of any color in the world. Uh, he did that because he had a, obviously, he had a skill, and he had personality, and people started buying a lot of the stuff that bore his name or his number or things like that. So if you look at how people go from poverty to prosperity, it is entrepreneurial-led economic activity that leads to the appreciation of education and social capital. Social capital is when you reach back and you pull other people along from your community, typically, and where you create an aspirational roadmap for your young people. So the challenge that you have in the Black community, in my view, is that nobody does business with Blacks. And too often, I think people look at Blacks like children as opposed to an adult. So if you look at, for instance, all the, the charity, you would say things like, we're going to have an inner city kids program. Well, what that means is it's a little black kid program. So what happens is there's all this charity that's directed at little kids. But what happens when they get to be 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 25, 30, so on, there's nothing for them anymore. You have a, an infrastructure of minority business programs where those things were intended. I think at the time, in the 1960s, when they first came about, there were people, I believe, of goodwill that worked and put those programs together so that blacks could participate in the economy because they had been left out of the economy. It wasn't accidental. It was purposeful being left out of the economy. But what's happened is that blacks never really participated in that. And blacks are at the bottom of economic participation, even in the minority programs. People who are born outside the United States get more money from minority programs than blacks do. So why most people would think blacks get all the benefit from these minority programs, set-aside programs, that we actually don't. Uh, so what happens is if you don't have economic activity, you fall into poverty. And uh, when you're in poverty, lots and lots of bad things happen. You can look at the beginning of the last, in the last century, the immigrant communities that came to this country, the Eastern European Jewish community, the Irish community, the Italian community, they went from poverty to prosperity in really about a generation and a half. Same thing for, for Asians. Now, why is it that blacks couldn't go through the same progress? They were obviously legal barriers that were put in the way of blacks. And when those came about, after the, excuse me, the civil rights, uh, laws came about in the 1960s, you still had the issue of the lack of economic participation. So in my view, this is the big problem that we have. So the outcome of this, in my view, of the, in the black community, is that all the economic proof points are in entertainment. It's, 
It's sing it's musicians, it's actors, it's athletes, it's people like that. In fact, you ought to try this experiment. Name two famous black entrepreneurs that don't have anything to do with entertainment. I've asked this question a thousand times and nobody's ever been able to answer it. So therefore, what does, what is the market saying to black kids? Place your bet on entertainment. It takes as much effort to be a professional athlete as it does to be a computer programmer, to be in finance, to be an entrepreneur. It takes a lot of work and you understand that you have to compete against other people. But the market is telling them this is where you place, you have to place your bet. That's why there's no good guy programs or government programs to teach black kids how to play basketball, to be musicians. There's no good guy programs to teach Dominican kids to play baseball or Brazilian kids to play soccer. The market tells them that's where you place your bet. So it used to be when there was boxing. After Joe, first there was Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson became uh, right heavy, first black heavyweight champion. Lots of blacks go into boxing. Joe Lewis becomes heavyweight champion. Sends market signals, go into boxing. Sugar Ray Lewis, Muhammad Ali, on through the line. So you see the kids saying, this is where to place my bet. Their families reinforce that. They have their own ecosystems that support that. So my view is then, how do we get everybody to participate in the free enterprise system? Because I think that if we don't, we can lose it. Young people have a fascination with socialism because they think it means social good, which it doesn't. It means government control over your decision making. So I think business, in my view, big businesses, in my view, are the worst. They have these false minority business programs and they talk about diversity, but don't do anything meaningful. In fact, they do things in my view that are quite shameful. Like I'll give you an example. If you take a, let's say a big delivery company that owns planes, uh, they wanna get credit for minority business programs. So what they'll do is they'll go to somebody they're gonna buy a lot of fuel from, say we wanna buy $100 million worth of fuel from you, but let's be corporate good guys and we will buy, we want you to sell us $100 million worth of fuel from this black company, okay? They'll make $250,000 on a $100 million deal, right? Which is equivalent to one FTE. So this is really what happens and why blacks are so far behind. In fact, there's here some numbers actually from the census because I did the study on this. If you took all the revenues of companies in the U.S. that were majority-owned companies with employees, it would have been $9.4 trillion. Women a trillion, Asians 455 billion, Hispanics 276 billion, and Blacks 98 billion. As I say, a lot of that 98 billion is a pass-through number. Now, people would say, well, what about education? Well, Blacks in that case have double the educational achievement of Hispanics. So education is not a leader. You can get educated in a lot of stuff that doesn't pay you, doesn't pay you anything. So in my view, we as a country, especially now, have to make sure that we protect the free enterprise system by making sure that those people that have capabilities get to participate in it and then exchange opportunity to responsibility for bringing somebody else along. And that way, I think in a generation, we will fix a lot of the mess that we've made. That was a long-winded answer to your question. I'm not even sure if you asked me the question. No, it definitely answers the question, but it, it, I, I'm glad that you supported it with uh, the census information. I, I think that provides a unique perspective on it. Uh, and I, I think going back to that first conversation towards the end, I know Gary had mentioned the idea that he was partnering with other CEOs in the Chicagoland area about uh, the equivalent of a MBA program to understand the ins and outs of business. And you were coming at it from a different lens in terms of access to opportunity. Uh, down the road. Uh, so with that in mind, you, you mentioned you don't think it's the education system. 
I know that you had an opposing. No, it's not that there's not an issue with the education system. There are obviously issues with our, with our education system. However, in my view, people respond to the incentives in their environment. Like I'll give you another example. Have you ever gotten an email that said, my uncle was a general, he left me a hundred million dollars. Uh, can I give me your bank account information so I can transfer the money to you and I'll share it with you? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know who oh, yeah. that? These are teenage kids in Nigeria. These are teenage kids in Nigeria that have had to learn how to read, write, and reason. They did it because there's a very strong economic incentive. Now, unfortunately, it's a perverse one because it's criminal and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's immoral. But what they've had to do in order to prepare themselves for that is to focus on their education. And I would bet you people in uh, Nigeria would die for the, any educational opportunity that somebody in the United States has. So the thing is, what are the incentives? Economies are based on incentives and constraints. That is what an economy is based on. It's incentives, constraints, alternatives, and interdependencies. So what are the incentives for you to put in 10,000 hours of work? Right? If you were, for me, right, if I want to be a, a cellist, right, I'm, I'm too late for that. You know, that wasn't my talent. So you have, the market tells you where to place your bet. And it has to be the case. That is why you would have to say, there is no physical reason why somebody born in the United States couldn't be a world-class soccer player. But there are none. There are no American Ronaldos or whatever the other guy from Argentina's name is, I can't remember, or David Beckham or any of those guys. Why is that? It is absolutely not a physical restraint. I'm sure that if Bo Jackson had been born in Africa or Europe or someplace, he could have been a great soccer player. He would have been a great soccer player instead of a great football player and baseball player. So there is a tie between economics and preparation for the opportunities in the market. 